Glitches. These inexplicable happenings are usually akin to fiction, but those who've experienced them will testify otherwise, leaving them dazed, confused, and with so many questions. Please join me in welcoming fellow horror YouTuber Kaylee Elise as we question the nature of our reality with these eight Glitch in the Matrix stories. Number one. Four years ago, I needed serious surgery to remove a tumour in my brain. The doctor said everything was going to be nice and easy, but it took me two years to return and finish school. The surgery went so poorly that whilst the anesthesiologists and nurses were trying to keep me alive, the surgeon had a conference with my parents to keep them up to speed. Brain bleeding, severe swelling in the brainstem, etc. What's weird is that during this conference, my mum's cell phone rang. The caller ID showed it was coming from my cell phone. I had put my dad in charge of my phone in case the worst were to happen. Notify girlfriend and friends that I had passed. Anyway, he pulls my phone out of his pocket and it's turned off with the battery removed. They wrap the meeting up with the surgeon and as they walk to the nurse's station to thank them for looking after me, my mum's phone buzzes twice. She has a voicemail left by whoever was calling her from my phone. She listened to it and said she heard my voice. Hey mum, it's me. I know things are weird right now, but I'm sitting here on this bench and I'm warm. I think everything will be okay. Talk to you later. Say hi to dad. Bye. About a month after my surgery, when I had recovered and moved back home, my mum had me listen to the voicemail and I couldn't believe it. I turned white. I cried. When I heard my own voice, I thought maybe I had died and I was being punished. I immediately opened my phone and looked through the call history. There it was. I saw it. The timestamp of an outgoing call on the date of my surgery. 20 minutes after I was wheeled into the operating room. I don't know what in the world caused this. Number two. As a child, my parents always introduced me to everyone that ever came into our house. I was taught to shake hands and say, what's your name? This was a rule that could not be broken. One night, when I was seven or eight, I had a bad dream about being old. I went out to the living room to talk to my dad, who always used to play Legos with me when I had a bad dream. This time, we got the Legos out, but... There was a man in a chair. I went to introduce myself and, to my surprise, my dad shooed me away, got out my Legos, and proceeded to talk to the man instead of play with me. The man and my father talk for some time about things I don't understand and neither say a word to me. It was weird, but I was young and the Legos were fun and eventually I forgot the whole thing and went to bed. Never thought about it again. Fast forward 12 years. I head to bed one night after having a beer or two with some friends and immediately start, from what I can tell, lucid dreaming. I've never had a dream this vivid since or before. In the dream, I am sitting in a chair talking to my dad about what I have done with my life. He is happier than usual and very interested. In the distance, I hear a young person calling for him. He gets up, walks out of the room, and returns a minute later with me as a child and a box of Legos. Young me approaches. My dad shoes child me away. Young me goes and plays with the Legos. My dad and I commence talking about the danger of the butterfly effect and how everything could change if we spoke. He insists we wait until young me falls asleep to continue talking about the future. I then have two more similar dreams where I see myself from perspectives of mysterious, forgotten people and situations, all with my father, all discussing time travel, my future life, and the consequences of changing things. 
I woke up absolutely convinced I had time traveled or that the ghost of Christmas past decided he wanted to take an off-season shift. It took me a week to rationalize it and still gives me chills just reading it out. Number three. About four or five years ago, I worked at a Little Caesars pizza. Usually I would work inside on pizzas, but we had just started up this Monday madness deal where pizzas were only $4 on Mondays. So we needed someone to advertise. I was a wild and weird metalhead. So I took up the position on Mondays of just going out there and throwing a sign around to get attention and bring people in for pizza. Not exactly glamorous, but I had fun. One day, whilst I was there doing my thing, I see a van heading straight towards me. It jumps the curb and slams into me, and I feel it crush me against the electrical box controlling the street lights. I see a quick flash as the traffic lights flick off and then black out. I gasp. <gasps> I'm still on the corner and nothing has happened. No van or anything. Well, I was a little shaken up as you can imagine. So I decide to pack it up and walk back into the store for a break. I walk no more than 15 feet away from that corner. When I hear a crash, I look back and a van just hopped the curb into the electrical box and I watch the traffic lights flick off. Needless to say, I took the day off. I still think about it from time to time. Number four. I lived in the Hollywood Hills and this happened in the early 80s. Crazy knocking at my door at 9 p.m. I go to answer the door and there's a lady there just hysterical talking about how there's so much blood. She looks normal and is dressed in clean clothing, so we let her in. She tells a story about seeing someone get stabbed. I call the police and two uniformed LAPD officers arrive in 10 minutes. They take the lady away and tell us that she was reported missing, has a mental condition, and lives up the street. All good. 30 minutes later, another knock at the door. Two different cops this time responding to the call. They have no idea who the other two cops were. They take our information and statements, description of the officers and the lady as well. Radio conversations back and forth ensue, and they really don't have any idea how any other cops could have picked her up because they were given the call 40 minutes ago. Number five. When I was younger, I used to live near thick woods. I used to dress very uniquely. I would usually wear Halloween costumes whenever I wanted and stuff like that. I had a weird fascination with masks. Anyway, one day whilst I was wearing a Spider-Man mask and playing in the woods, I see a person wearing a leather jacket and oddly coloured jeans. I tried to follow them, but lose them in the forest after about 30 minutes of trying and then go home. Fast forward about seven to eight years in the future. I didn't live at the house near the thick woods anymore, but my grandfather did, and I visit him periodically. I decide to go for a walk around the forest for old time's sake. So I put on my black leather jacket and tie dye jeans and go walking around when I see this small person wearing a Spider-Man mask following me around. Since I know the forest like the back of my hand, I lose them quite quickly. About an hour later, I realised what happened and felt genuinely terrified. Strange shit happens in Northern British Columbia. Number six. In 1999, when I was two, I was running in the back garden. I slipped and full-on flying face planted my forehead onto a concrete slab. My memory is shady, but I know I had a huge gash in my forehead. I remember a paramedic sitting me on my kitchen bunker, pushing back my fringe and examining my injury. 
I was losing a hell of a lot of blood. So I was rushed to the hospital, and he stopped the bleeding as best he could in the back of the ambulance. Fast forward 14 years. I'm sitting at a reception for my cousin's wedding, having a few beers with my dad and granddad. We're saying hello to the rest of the guests, and I notice a man that I swear to God I recognize. My mom brings him over to meet us, and he shakes my hand and says, Oh, yes. He brushes my fringe away, and you've already guessed it, I realize where I remember him from. We get to talking, and I shit you not, he's the guy that rushed my mom to the hospital on the day she gave birth to my brother. What else? My granddad put down his beer and tells me that while he was on holiday in France before I was even born, he fell down a set of stairs and broke his leg. Who the hell just happens to be turning the corner? This paramedic, who is also on holiday, he practically carries my granddad to the hospital and goes on his way, refusing to take any money. In 2010, my cousin, the groom at this wedding, is driving home. On this same day, another female cousin, from a different, removed part of the family, is also driving home from work. Cousin number one has to swerve to avoid a deer, and he ends up piling his car into cousin number two. Who the fuck is on call to arrive at the scene? Yep, paramedic man. The two cousins get speaking, they aren't related in any way, and they hit it off and get married three years later. Paramedic man is the best man at the wedding. Number seven. I was speaking to one of my best friends one day about life and things, and we were really calm and chill. My disclaimer here is that I was decently tired, but I have never hallucinated nor sleepwalked before or anything. However, I won't deny that this could still be the case, but it felt so different. Anyway, randomly in the middle of our conversation, she said that I entered some sort of weird trance, and everything I said sounded like I was reading it off a script. During this time, I remember opening my eyes and saw an oak desk underneath me, and a paper, with words and equations scattered all over it. I remember writing with some sort of quill, but it was made from a huge animal bone, which I think is extremely weird. So as this happens, I'm reading through the scribblings, and then it hits me. A huge wave of excitement and relief, as if I'd discovered something huge on this paper. I then woke up. I told my friend about this, and she suggested that it might be me remembering a past life, a memory, or something to that effect. Perhaps I was an inventor and was working on something? Maybe. I would throw all of that away and not worry about it, if not for what happened next. I smiled at her, and then this is the part I don't remember, and she had to fill me in on. I started spewing out excited knowledge at her. Pretty much all I ended up saying was, Our universe is a shadow of another universe, meaning that our 3D world is a shadow or projection of a 4D world. I made it clear that it was possible that our universe might just be a shadow of a shadow. The speed of light, quantum entanglement, gravity, other universal laws, are all footprints that prove this, and will be shown to the world in the next few years. I made it clear that nature would not allow for a natural speed limit in the highest order of the universe. All human consciousness in every human is actually of a single being in a higher order universe. This means that we are all connected in a very direct way. We do have free will. I kept repeating this for some reason, stating that if we did not have free will, the random cosmos would not exist. I don't know what that means. It was such a strange experience because I woke up crying and smiling at her. I explained that I saw my past life and I could feel things that he felt. The excitement and whatnot. We talked for a moment and she explained everything that I told her and everything she wrote down and I am completely confused as to where any of this came from. 
I haven't slept in two days. But I'm extremely happy and excited about this all. It feels so surreal. Number 8 I know a fair amount of these stories are feasible to explain, and are basic coincidences at most, but hear me out. This may be long, but I was thoroughly disturbed last night at work, and it seems like a glitch for me to have even found this subreddit the day after my experience. Let me just say that I am known to be a pretty observant guy. All my friends and family who know me even slightly well are aware that I notice everything. It is pretty hard to slip something past me. Not to say that I'm proud or a cocky asshole or anything, but it's just a little background into me before you read this long ass story. Thank you. I have worked at this sandwich joint for over a year and a half. We run a tight knit crew. I am a good employee in good standing with the owner and the manager, and I'm a little bit of a night crew manager myself. The restaurant itself is very slow, as we tend to receive maybe 20 to 30 customers within my entire 6 to 7 hour closing shift. This means that I naturally tend to start conversations with customers. I like to figure out where people work their day jobs, where they went to college, how their lives are, and all that stuff. You could say I get personal, but hey, people like it when you're not just a robotic employee. I even met a dude who went to Berkeley Law School and he told me a lot about life and school and all that, but that's neither here nor there. Anyway, I like to talk to people. It gets me through the days, you know? And generally, people are pretty damn nice about it. I even have a mini little arsenal of conversation progression. Just headed home after a long day's work, huh? Nice. Where do you work at? Oh, that sounds cool. Did you need a degree for that? Oh, nice. Where'd you go to college? Did you like it there? Most conversations are extended versions of that, and it usually gets interesting hearing about such diverse backgrounds. About a week or so ago, this man came in. I would say early 30s, dark hair, dark features, sweatpants, a Nike sweatshirt, and hood up. It was late at night, say 9.30ish, and I was ready to close this bad boy up and get home, but had another half hour to kill. So I said, screw it. Let's start a conversation with this guy. Maybe his dad is like a congressman or something cool. Maybe I'll learn something from him. Holy hell, this guy was creepy as shit. He wouldn't meet my direct eye line. He would talk to me by looking above or between my eyes. He kept his left hand tucked in the back of his pants waistline. I realize that sentence is a bit hard to visualize, but the best visual I can give is like when people tuck a gun in the back of their pants. It was like he was clutching a gun. He kept his hand there the entire time. He was looking nervous and reluctant, as most people who commit robberies do. And as the sandwich making process progressed, I was becoming more and more sure that I was about to be robbed. He asked for a ham sandwich on white bread. The way we lay the ham is pretty formulaic, but due to his creepy demeanor, I was admittedly feeling nervous. The eight slices of ham ended up being folded over at different ratios, laid on top of each other sloppily, and did not look like too appetizing of a sandwich. The man asked for Swiss cheese. The formula calls for four slices, so as I always do, I picked up a stack of the triangularly cut cheese and fan it all out in such a way where I can grab four and throw the rest back into the pile. I lay the cheese in a less than orderly fashion, and the sandwich is still clearly missing its picture perfectness you see on TV. These details may seem irrelevant, but I just want you to know the gist of it, and you'll see why. The man asked if I could toast his sandwich. This means that I would have to turn my back to him for a few seconds to throw it in the toaster. I was running a lot of shit through my mind, and I was not prepared to turn my back on him. This caused a mini sort of panic, and I grabbed his sandwich and attempted to stand in such a way where I could keep my eye on him while my waist twisted enough to get the sandwich toasted, but still be looking at him. As you might have guessed, I dropped it. I dropped the sandwich. I made a basic attempt to catch it as it fell, you know? Kinda like flared my knee up and tried to use my waist as a sort of cushion to hold up my elbow to catch the sandwich, but to no avail. I guess just imagine fumbling with your phone and the weird motions your body makes in an attempt to catch it right as soon as you realized you dropped it. You get the idea. I was panicking hardcore. 
splat. In the few seconds before I look up, I was bracing myself for a very angry creep staring at me. But he was gone. He had left. Vanished. I didn't even hear the squeak of the door, the footsteps, nothing. I ran outside, I looked left, I looked right, looked left again, and no cars were driving away. No cars were even remotely parked close enough for him to be hiding in or behind. He was just gone. The sandwich was still on the ground, fallen face down. One of the triangles of cheese landed in just a perfect angular contrast with the tiles on the floor. Of the eight pieces of ham on the sandwich, six were left betwixt the bread and the floor while two pieces flew off and landed adjacent to the cabinet on top of which the toaster is located. Fast forward to last night. A man much older than the first comes in, I would say 60s, white hair, dark features, probably around 6'6", was probably the tall, dark, and handsome type of dude in the 70s or something. Pretty nice man, up until he started ordering his sandwich. Fuck, I just got chills typing that last sentence because I have no idea how to proceed with the story. It just gets unsettling for me. He ended up asking for white bread. I started to carry on my casual conversation. How's your night going, sir? Just getting off work? The man answered with a stern affirmative and offered no other information. Okay. Clearly this guy didn't want to talk about anything other than his sandwich. Weird. What kind of sandwich for you, sir? Ham. Alright. Pretty stern guy. No nonsense. Maybe he's like in the mafia or some shady shit and he got nervous when I asked about work. Alright. Fine. Let me make you your sandwich and you can get out of here, man. He then reaches behind his waist in the exact same fucking way the first guy did. I swear to God, the gesture and motion were the exact same smoothness, timing, and form. He kept his left hand there the exact way the other man did about a week ago. The same way. Everything started eerily coming back to me now. It was like the most jolting deja vu moment I have ever had, and I honestly thought it was just that, deja vu. But wait, there's more. The way I ended up laying the ham looked very, very familiar. The distance between each slice, the way each layer peeled off the stack in a ratio to the next, the way the slices folded over. I can honestly swear to you that I was building the same fucking sandwich that I built just a week ago. I was having one of those moments where a bunch of shit just passes through your mind all at once, and it's actually kind of surprising just how many thoughts you can have in such a short amount of time. But I remember telling myself to take the risk and just reach for the Swiss because I just had a feeling. How did you know I wanted Swiss? He actually wanted Swiss. How in the world do I pass it off as a lucky guess? Well, exactly how you would think. Lucky guess, I uttered as I let out a meager, pathetic little chuckle. The man proceeds to say the most spine-chilling thing I have ever heard. I read stories on Reddit about paranormal or weird shit happening to people. There's actually an Ask Reddit thread about it right now. I always see variations of the quote, chill down my spine, and have never really experienced that. I fucking experienced it that night. The man looks at me as if I told him I knew the winning lottery number for the next win. Very inquisitive look. Very, very strong sense of passion in his words when he said this. No. Seems like you've done this before. He just called out my deja vu. He just confirmed that he was aware of my deja vu. At this point, the phrase time traveler just made its first entrance into my mind. I looked at him with the most ridiculously awestruck expression. I sat there staring at him for a good five seconds before I laid the cheese. It was a surreal moment. It was like the climax of this confrontation had already happened, but I still needed to lay the cheese and veggies and roll the sandwich up and then ring him in at the register. How much creepier is this gonna get? I just didn't get it. I picked up the cheese in the exact same way I always do, fan out the top four slices, then lay them down. I was looking down at the same sandwich I had built a week prior. I swear to you, the cheese, the bread, the ham, everything was just uncannily similar. 
I credit myself to be a rational dude, so at this point, I was just calling it deja vu and trying not to feel disturbed. The man said, just lettuce and mayo, no toast. Huh. Not toasted. Thank the good lord. He didn't want it toasted, this fucking deja vu is over, and it's all just a coincidence. Right? Well, some of you all may not know, but there is a thing called a hot food tax in some places. Therefore, when a sandwich is toasted, there is a button for hot food taxation, and it's something like 12 cents. So as a force of habit, I read the order back to the customer in this fashion. All right, sir, so a ham sandwich, not toasted with a bag of chips and two cookies. He looked very concerned with why I had mentioned it was not toasted. Why did you have to specify that it's not toasted? Then I explained to him what I said above, all about the hot food tax and blah blah, force of habit because if a sandwich is toasted, you repeat the order like, alright, a ham sandwich, toasted, with chips and a drink, or something like that. After explaining that to him, he was just like, kind of inquisitive about it, nothing too weird. I didn't want to keep him any longer, so I took his card, swiped it, and could not wait for him to get the fuck out. As he walked out the door, he looked back at me with the creepiest fucking smile you can conceive in your reddity imaginations. He turns around and says what I honestly do not think I will ever forget. Just to let you know, I didn't not toast the sandwich because of the tax. I'm not that much of a cheap bastard. Okay, the guy is trying to lighten the mood, right? Sweet, yeah, I know he's not a cheap bastard. I mean, it's 12 cents but he felt the need to tell me the real reason he didn't get it toasted. I just didn't want you to drop it. And just like that, he was gone. Holy shit, I have chills everywhere. This was without a doubt the most spine-chilling thing I have ever experienced. I explained this whole thing to my father, and he came up with the idea that these two men were probably father and son and were just fucking with me, and I am making up the rest of the details in my mind. Impossible. Do you know why? The man who owns the restaurant I work at owns one other. Just one other. Halfway across town. When Guy 1 came in, I was at a store that was about 8 miles away from the store that Guy 2 came in. The realistic chances of these two men knowing each other, and tracking me down, finding me across town, and fucking with me like this is impossible. I, and three other employees, the manager of both stores, the morning shift leader, and my counterpart, the co-night shift manager, are the only four employees that jump between the two stores. The chances of this being a methodically planned prank is absolutely outrageous. Hey guys, it's Mort here, and thank you so much for listening. I want to give an extra special thank you to Kaylee Elise for collaborating with me on this video. She is an incredibly talented YouTuber who is seriously worth your time. Her high quality weekly videos are something I guarantee you will not want to miss. So head over to her channel to subscribe and watch the video that we just made about the Wolf family murders from the 1920s. It is an incredibly fascinating and dark case, which I am sure you'll all enjoy. I bet most of you know her already, but if you don't, now is definitely the time to change that. So show her some love, subscribe, and thank me later when you binge watch all her content. Because trust me, 90,000 people are not wrong. As always, if you enjoyed the video, a like would be very much appreciated. And subscribe for even more great horror content to come. And if you've just come from her channel, you might want to check out our previous collaboration about seven skinwalker stories. But anyway, it's time for us to head on over to Kaylee's Corner. So follow the link and I'll see you there. Auctioneer E.N. Mayer was helping the police with the investigation of the farm and he uncovered the shotgun believed to be the murder weapon in a pond just off the property. However, as far as tracing it back to the killer or the victims, authorities had no luck. There was no manufacturer that had a record of the firearm, and therefore its owner could not be traced, and no one involved in the investigation or in town recognized it as belonging to anyone that they knew.